before I turn it over to uh, other speakers, uh, arts and culture is very big to my administration. This again is being utilized through the CDBG uh, grants. I want to thank Kevin Kennedy and, and Brian Connors and uh, uh, Siobhan, Scott Hansen, the whole crew, Tommy Matthews. Uh, it was a $5,000 grant. I, I think uh, Ms. Carlino probably put more blood, sweat, and tears than that into it. But it sends a message of vibrancy in, in our downtown area and our, our other neighborhood areas where we're doing this. Morgan has done a tremendous amount of this work in our cultural district. And I think it also is able to send a good, healthy uh, feeling about the city of Springfield. And when you utilize arts and culture, many a times that translates to money being spent and invested uh, in our city. So I think that is extremely uh, important. Morgan, you come on over. You're spearheading a lot of the activities down here. We appreciate your continued efforts, whether it's the utility box or me falling flat on my face playing the piano. Uh, we're making We're making tremendous headway. Morgan, come on up. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you all for being here. I really do want to thank the city again for their investment in this project, as well as the Springfield Cultural Council, which funds fabulous projects like this all across the city every year. Um, I just want to point out that arts are economic development, and this is a great example of how that happens. Um, the creative economy in Springfield contributes $50 million to our annual economic uh, atmosphere here in Springfield. As people walk past this mural, they're going to feel better in Springfield, they're going to feel better about Springfield, and that just attracts more people, more residents, more businesses, and just makes everybody feel great about the city. Um, special thanks to Kim for her absolute devotion to this project here every day and night in the rain um <laughs> and i i just i hope to see more of these projects and thank you all again thanks more thank you you know what arts and culture what goes together is music and we have the fantastic community music school here in the city of Springfield, which I want to commend uh, uh, Ms. McCafferty, the executive director, because they've really reached out uh, to our city kids, and that means a tremendous amount to me. So, Madam Music, would you like to come up and say a few words, please? Come on up. Put your hands Arlene. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so kind. I think just to carry on with the theme, when we not only activate public space with beauty, but then engage our young people. And what Mayor Sarno is speaking of is uh, the Sonido Musica program, which is a community music school partnership with the Springfield Public School, has over 1,200 students that are doing violin and band instruments. And we recently got a grant to support public space, pop-up concerts that are going to engage the city's young people so that when people get off the trains, there's going to be a pop-up concert that involves kids from all over Springfield. And that's how you connect communities. It's beauty, it's, it's commitment to, to an art form, and it's supported by the city of Springfield. And we are very proud to be here. So thank you, Mayor. My pleasure, thank you very much. Okay, Big Poppy was always the uh, cleanup hitter for the Red Sox. I could have used them this year, too. So we're going to close with our cleanup uh, hitter, the artiste. Uh, John, I know I call you the artiste, but now we have a female artiste. That, uh, and listen, if you need a key lock for anything or something happens, come to Giffords, too, on top of that. So put your hands together for the artiste, Kim Carlino. Carlino. Got a great handshake. I hate to cut you a backhand from her. Hi, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, thank you. I just want to say um, I love games, any kind, and I love playfulness. Um, I grew up with Milton Bradley games. I think we all did. And I wanted to bring together uh, that sense of playfulness. Um, joy, happy, um, geometric uh, sense on this um, here in downtown um, on the mural and um, because I believe that games have the power to connect and that's what we need right now and it's sitting down with each other um, 
sharing time and creating relationship. And I believe that this mural symbolizes that. And that was my experience as I was creating it out here for three and a half weeks every day. People going to work, coming home, the people living um, in the silver brick lofts, coming out and saying thank you for making my home beautiful. And, um, and wanting more. So um, thank you for increasing um, the public art budget and uh, offering more opportunity. Um, I just want to say thank you first to Eric Lesser. He connected me to Morgan. Um, Morgan took me on a tour of the cultural district and I have to say I kind of fell in love with Springfield. Good. And um, there Good timing, Herbie, good timing. <laughs> I've met so many wonderful people um, out, out trying to uh, create community and working so hard. And I feel really honored to have been a part of that. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if you have any questions, you need a key done, or you want to get painting lessons, uh, we'll take it on. Thank you so much for continuing to spread the good word about our beloved city of Springfield. Oh, we got to cut something? I'm pretty good with scissors, as you all know. Father's a barber, mother's a seamstress. <laughs> Ready? On three, look up, okay? Okay. One, two, three. <laughs>。My background is in painting, so I'm a painter. I make, you know, kind of works on paper. I like to work large scale, and in 2014, I did my first mural. And that was about 50 feet long by about 16 feet high, but it was an interior space. So just like a flat wall, it's really different than the brick. Um, and then the next year in 2015, I did a, um, the science, um, I did a mural for the Science Center at Academy Hill here in Springfield, which my son goes to school there. Um, and then I did a public art project in, on the Lower East Side. But this is the very first exterior mural of this scale that I've ever even a, come close to working on. It's a hundred feet long by 20 feet high. I had to rent a scissor lift, uh, which is the first time I'd ever really, I'd ever used one outside. I've used one for like some, you know, kind of wall painting before, not fine art. and. I guess the, the challenges would be just like working on this scale, you can't see everything all at once. So like I'd go up on the scissor lift, do something, and then I'd have to come back down on the scissor lift, step back into the parking lot, look, then go back up. And so just that kind of process of working, stepping back and looking, just is, takes, um, it just takes more time to be able to kind of see. And with the, the project, I had, um, I had a drawing that I submitted to the city, but my own work and way of, uh, my kind of process is really improvisational. And so I wanted to leave room for there to be that in it. So while I was working, I was also stepping back and looking like, okay, what does this need here? What does that need there? And so. I'd say one of the challenges is that your process is on view for the public. So things that like nobody would see in your studio, everybody's seeing mistakes when they happen and you just have to like, there's all this acceptance that has to happen. Um, also like just working on brick and the, it's not just a brick surface, there's like all these areas that are, you know, like other like it where it was like fixed and it just right. kind of trying to get these straight lines to appear straight over that um, so that that piece um, was hard and just kind of racing time 
you know. It took two and a half weeks longer than I had kind of anticipated. Right, so I think public art is a super important mechanism for solving two large problems that we have in the city, um, both economic development issues, but also public safety issues. Um, on the first note, economic development, it's really important to kind of beautify spaces, celebrate spaces, so that folks feel comfortable as they're walking around, coming downtown to our new businesses, which then feeds into more visits, more new businesses, better public perception of the space. Um, and I mean, we've proven that the creative economy in Springfield is, it's a huge industry. We have a $50 million economic impact annually, and we're really no joke. Uh, this is just one small piece of that. Um, and then second, public safety, it kind of follows the same mechanism with more excitement in the neighborhood, more good feeling about the neighborhood. People will be walking more, they'll bring their friends down, there's more foot traffic, which then suppresses criminal activity, makes it feel safer, and then truly and actually makes it safer in the area. So I think it's absolutely critical that we keep investing in projects like this. They don't have huge budgets like bricks and mortar projects often do, but they make an enormous impact for the future.